How important is religion, devotion, piety, worship, in a word, doing the will of God? For Christian believers of all times, the religious dimension of man is at the very heart, at the very core of his existence. And in a sense, those who reject that give a kind of upside-down inverted testimony to its truth. I'm talking about the secular world. The world that says that religion is purely a private affair. Well, if it's something you can afford, something you think is enjoyable, that's quite all right. But the human world is fundamentally not simply anti-religious, totally indifferent and detached from the will of God. Good and evil is something purely pragmatic. What's useful to me, what suits my taste, or what is useless to me, or doesn't suit my taste. The modern world will tell us that, of course, this is the correct solution. After all, look at what science has accomplished, modern progress construction of societies which are based on the separation of church and state. And by that, they don't mean this or that particular religious organization. They simply mean religion is irrelevant to society. In this regard, a rather interesting observation of Blessed John Duns Scotus, regarded by most people today as rather peripheral, one of those uh, uh, endless medieval questions about how many angels can sit on the head of a needle. Is a secular act possible? Not simply in theory, but in such wise that people do act in a way which is either good nor evil. A human act that is independent without any relationship to the norms of good and evil of the law of God. Scotus answers, of course, on the natural level, as well as the supernatural, we are capable of acting in a secular way. People will say, well, that's odd. If you can act in a secular way, you can act independently of God without being guilty. You have no merit, but neither do you have any guilt. And of course, there are actions like that. But here is the trick. The point that Scotus wants to underscore, precisely because that is possible to the finite will, we can begin to understand the need for a trial proving. The mistake is to think that uh, the capacity to perform this or that action, which is morally neutral, is happiness. It's not happiness. It may be contentment but it is not happiness. Let us take an example, an occasional glass of beer, or perhaps more than an occasional glass of beer. Or the man who likes to enjoy a pipe full of tobacco. Those are, in themselves, morally neutral acts. Any sin there? No particular sin. But is it perfection? Is it true, lasting happiness? No way. But there we see the trick uh, of the serpent in the garden of paradise. People think that God tempted our first parents to, as were, see if he could trick them up. Well, God didn't tempt anyone in order to trick them up. St. James tells us this in his letter, first chapter. God is not a tempter in that sense, but he is a tester. And the test of what we all know to be something that is good. A man passes from adolescence to adulthood only by passing the test the test of his will, that he is capable of being responsible. The human will, the created will, the angelic will, is not capable of happiness until it has been proved, until it has been shown to be capable of meriting. That's what's wrong with the secular act. This is what is uh, so terribly wrong with the decision to make the secular the equivalent of that. Well, if I can 
do all of this, um, and I like it this way, that's just as good as getting to heaven. Know what he said? You will be God's only if you chuck God's will. You won't die. That was a, the first part was a trick observation. The second part was a damnable lie. The Creator condemned the serpent for having told that kind of a lie. On the other hand, we are given a second chance to redeem ourselves. And here we must look at another. What is this test between the two trees? The tree of life is a type, a symbol of Jesus. This is the whole point of our existence. The whole of the creation exists for the sake of Jesus. And Mary says, Blessed John Duns Scotus. If we prefer our own experience, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is good if I experience that is good. What is the first criterion offered us here? The will of God. How important this is. The trick of the serpent was to convince us that being happy, being blessed, is to be autonomous. That's a trick word. We have to examine that a little bit more, but being autonomous means no obligation. Cut the ties. Any obligation represses